Now, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. If you have not seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Um, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen the presentations that are that NCTV is kind enough to rebroadcast or any of the things that I've done at the Salt Marsh, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And in Nantucket, that means on Nantucket, excuse me, that means on Nantucket. That doesn't mean on Martha's Vineyard. It definitely doesn't mean on the mainland. So if that's what you're interested in, then this is the show designed to help you know the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about in order to do exactly that. Stay on Nantucket for the rest of your life. Now, a few people know me. Everybody seems to know um, my, my, my um, colleague, um, Allison Forsgren, who has been active with the Council on Aging, the Friends of Our Island Home. She kind of introduced me to the Friends and a million other things. And so uh, Allison usually finds these great guests and did it again this month, although I got to admit, I know one of the guests. So Allison, whom do we have here today? Well, today's show is about um, the elder services of Cape Cod and the islands, which is we'll learn more about from the new CEO. Um, but I would like to introduce the face of elder services here on Nantucket, um, who people probably know better than me, Sherry Hunt. Um, she she manages the program. She's the island director of the um, office here on um, Orange Street. She's also the case manager and the for um, home care and everything else. She's, I mean, Sherry is one of the first calls people make when they are looking for help or information about what to do with their themselves or their parents or their loved ones. So Sherry, thank you so much for, for coming on. No, thank you for inviting me. It, it's much appreciated. And, um, and Sherry is also one of the first people that I would call, you know, <laughs> oftentimes that I'm trying to figure out something, right? It's just, she's just a vital resource. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be employed by Elder Services for 23 years next month. And um, so I think I've learned a lot along the way. I was lucky enough to work with Marianne Ryan many years ago in the nutrition division. Uh, she is now our new CEO, joining Elder Services as a CEO in January of this year, uh, but she's held other roles um, and she's uh, sort of a blessing to me because she understands how different Nantucket is and has been willing to um, help me work through some of those things. So I'd like to introduce Mary Ann Ryan to the public. I'm, I'm Mary Ann Ryan. I'm the new CEO of uh, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands. And uh, our coverage area, um, besides the Cape and uh, Martha's Vineyard, definitely includes Nantucket. And um, the older adults and caregivers on Nantucket are um, very important to us uh, as far as our agency um, mission and our values go, um, providing services to older adults and caregivers on Nantucket. Um, through all sorts of programs, which I hope we get to touch upon some of them today. Um, I don't know if you would like me to uh, go into a little bit about my background, Arthur. Yes, even, th even though, uh, you know, Allison and I have agreed that usually we start with me asking how people ended up in, on Nantucket because it's like all over, the, all over the map. And you're not quite on Nantucket, you're on the Cape. But if you could just kind of talk about how you ended up doing this, then I think it would be a great idea for kind of you and Sherry to kind of tag team in terms of giving folks a sense of all of the things that you do, right? Because I mean, Sherry's always, Sherry's kind of like the ambassador from the from the mainland to, to Nantucket, right? So the face of it, but, but to actually, it's just great to actually have the CEO on to be kind of talking about those things. So a little bit about my background, like many people in the career of um, aging and healthcare, uh, after getting a master's degree in social work, um, I knew I always wanted to work with older adults um, population. And, and that's truly what I've done my whole career for the past 33 years. Um, besides a love of plants, I have definitely a love of working with people. And, yeah. um, and I believe, you know, it's kind of a gift to, to be able to work with uh, uh, and a reward to work with older adults and caregivers and, and to help them. Um, and after so many years of experience in the field, um, you, you're really able to, to, to know how to help navigate um, uh, families uh, working through problems and how to get services, how to advocate for people, um, and how to really, um, you know, do the best job possible. 
um, when it comes to the aging network. So that's a little bit of the background. I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of experience uh, with Elder Services of Cape Cod, having many roles here. So having a good understanding of the different programs that we offer, which is a lot. Um, and many of those programs we offer right on Nantucket. And, and that's important to know. So I don't know if we wanna jump into some of the, the basic programs, um, Sherry, that we uh, offer um, on Nantucket and, and how um, different folks out there listening to us today or watching us uh, can uh, give us a call and um, ask questions about services or make a referral for services. And I think once again, for people who, who aren't aware of elder services of Cape Cod and the Islands, you know, you, you, it's hard for folks to believe that there's actually a group, a taxpayer funded group, your taxpayer dollars at work, that's actually there to help you figure out how to deal with everything else, you know, to really help you globally, as well as providing pro a lot of programs on all that everything else. So that's I, once again, as a kind of an introduction to where you're going to be talking about programs, it's like if you become a senior, it's almost like your first call should be to these folks just to get so that you can get a sense of what they do and so that they can get a sense of what you do. Because that way, if there's an emergency, you know, you know who to call and they already know you because they've got a profile, because there's something. I just wanted to kind of mention that kind of starting off, right? And so, and so what do you think are the programs that um, are most, or are the most utilized, are they most underutilized? I mean, what should people who are looking for services on Nantucket know about? I, I would have to say initially, um, I think we're best known here for Meals on Wheels. People don't often realize all of the other programming we offer. Right. Um, the Meals on Wheels program, uh, I guess is the more public program, more, more people are aware of it. Um, we service right now, as of today, there are 47 seniors in the community receiving Meals on Wheels. Um, and does that, does that program do both the, the deliveries that you do as well as the, the thing that happens at, actually at the Salt Marsh? Is yes, that right all now, the same? There, it's all the same, but the Salt Marsh is not, we don't have the congregate program open just yet. Right. We're still trying to put the pieces back together from the pandemic. Um, we hope to be open fairly soon. Um, but yes, both of those programs uh, come from the same provider. We are lucky enough that Kitty's Restaurant prepare, prepares all the foods for both programs. There's a, um, a menu that's done by the um, dietitian so that it meets everybody's needs as far as sodium and calories and um, you know fat content, all the sort of things that a senior would have to look at for their diet. It provides a main meal every day. Uh, we don't deliver on weekends and holidays, but we do offer frozen meals to substitute uh, for the regular meals. Um, there is criteria. Uh, oftentimes people think that, you know, um, anybody can get meals, just call up and get meals, but that's really not the case. There is certain criteria that's been set. Uh, Marianne may correct me, but I, I, it's usually state and federal guidelines, I believe, that we follow. Um, so you, you have to have certain unmet needs, uh, like you can't drive to go to the grocery store to purchase food. Um, you can't stand long enough to prepare a meal. You have certain health conditions that might prevent you from being able to shop, prepare. Um, and so it isn't just an income guideline, it's, it's guidelines outside. There's no income guidelines for Meals on Wheels, Allison. That's None. Great. It's only meeting the criteria for the need to establish a need about why we need to deliver this food to you at home. What, why are you unable to prepare a meal or get out, or do you not have a support system? No family, no, you know, um, no one that can go to the store and prepare your food and cook it for you and those kinds of things. So um, what happens is a referral will come in and it goes into a large database. Um, and then Mark Boudet, who is our nutrition coordinator, uh, actually makes an appointment and goes out into the home and sees the person and they review all of the things that are needed to establish that that this is a correct referral that this person is in need of this meal um, and it takes us about 
48 hours to get started. And then you are set up to receive whatever the plan you've determined with Mark would be. And Sherry, the people who deliver the food, are they employees of yours or are they volunteers? All volunteer based. Um, yeah. And, we and currently is, have, I think, 50 wow. volunteers. Um, you know, some are summer, some are winter, um, some are standby, like, you know, Allison, if you were doing it, we might call you and say, Allison, was somebody canceled? Can you come in today? Um, so, you know, they don't, but uh, the majority of them all drive the same day, every week, same route. And then we look for fill ins or somebody's leaving. Um, so last count, we had about 50 volunteers. We're right now um, trying to find volunteers to get the congregate program back open. Uh, that's been one of our stumbling blocks. We lost everyone during pandemic. So I've been lucky enough to get three applicants so far. Um, and, you know, we, we may well be able to get back open sooner than later. And so if people are available to volunteer for the congregate um, meals at the senior center, how would they sign up? At this point, um, I would say the call here, which is 508-228-4647. Um, and then just let us know you're interested in volunteering and then we'll get you out a volunteer application packet. Um, they process pretty quickly. And then we would get you set up for what day of the week you're able to help us. Mark would then train the person as to what the responsibilities of a volunteer at lunch would be. And so what are some of the other programs that, um, that people should know about? Hmm, I think the next bigger program is the home care program, which is then where you meet financial as well as need criteria. Uh, there are varying levels of the programming. Um, and again, you have to meet the criteria in order to proceed. You do um, pay what's uh, it's like a sliding scale copay based on your financial situation, which is why we have to look at the financial situation. Um, some people may pay zero. Some people will pay up to $141 a month under the home care program. We do offer what we call over income. And then you pay a percentage based on your income of the cost, anywhere from you know 50% to 100%. Um, those programs allow for us to give you nurses, certified nursing assistants to help you with bathing, dressing, grooming, uh, homemakers that do laundry, change beds, grocery shopping, meal prep. Th this is not a, one of the mass health programs where in order to qualify, you have to have like no assets. There That's is, correct. As, as Sherry says, there are income criteria, right? That's but, correct. But you know, most, so most people that I deal with, you know, they've got assets. Of course, everybody's got, if anybody's got a house in Nantucket, you, that means you're a millionaire, right? But that doesn't count, you know. It's not going to exclude you from any of this stuff. Yeah. And most of these, most folks have got very have got incomes that are going to put you eligible for this program. You know, that's the, correct. The vast we don't we, we don't look at assets. We only look at gross annual income. So Social Security, pension, interest, dividend, I you know, an IRA payment. Those would be the things we would look at. Mass Health is a whole entire different program. That if you are on a mass current mass health client and or may be eligible to become a mass health client, there are other programs that we can help with that provide up to 24 hours a day care if it meets criteria. Wow. Um, so so I this is the 50 year anniversary of elder services of Cape Cod and the islands. Um, and I think that that speaks very well to how the Commonwealth has cared for the people in our region. Uh, Marianne, can you talk a little bit about um, the last 50 years and what might be happening in the next couple? I mean, what are some changes or, um, or some program developments that you've seen um, in your history that would be interesting to hear about? Well, I think um, overall, again, uh, 50 years uh, this year in 2022, um, celebrating as a, a private nonprofit 
um, primary focus is to keep people independent in their homes. And the two signature programs that Sherry did mention would be Meals on Wheels and Home Care. And both of those programs uh, continue to grow and have grown throughout the years. Um, altogether, Cape and Islands, you know, we're putting out uh, probably about uh, 1,200 meals a day for Meals on Wheels every single day. Wow. And it does take close to 1,000 volunteers to do that. Um, Sherry explained a little bit about Nantucket is, is certainly a piece of that. And um, throughout the years, the, the program has grown. So it takes more volunteers to deliver Meals on Wheels. Um, uh, cost of food is on the rise. So cost of meals. The meals program is a donation program. Uh, we ask for a $3 donation per meal. If people can't afford that, that's okay. Uh, we make sure that they have um, a good nutritious meal. And a safety check every day. But so we, we do see the growth happening um, across the nation. We see the numbers um, of, of elders uh, increasing um, just uh, statistically as a cohort. Um, Nantucket and, and Dukes as well, along with the Cape, um, have grown in population of, of older adults um, in our census population. And um, over time, uh, people do need our services um, or certainly need to tap into just basic information to prepare maybe for the future or what's up, what's up the road, um, how to help family and friends. It's not just necessarily about I need help, it's family and friends. Um, but definitely um, the growth of the aging population across the country has definitely increased the, the baby boomers. They're, they're here now, that, that generation. Um, and we are seeing uh, more veterans come to, to our, uh, our caseloads, um, needing some assistance. And um, so again, it's, it's tremendous growth there. We are working on a lot of uh, creative programs at our agency, uh, more individualized caregiver programs. We're realizing that, you know, it's like one out of every six people is becoming a caregiver. If you're an adult, you're caregiving, you're not caregiving for a child, you're caregiving maybe for a parent or an aunt or an uncle. Um, and we're realizing that, um, you know, a lot of support needs to be given to our caregivers. So that's definitely um, an increase. Um, when you're a caregiver, uh, sometimes that interferes with your ability to work or you're trying to balance life, life work situations. So we want to see how we can help caregivers with that. So there's a lot of strategies um, and, and services that we've increased on uh, certainly with the pandemic, we've learned to do a lot of things online. We have online caregiver support groups. Um, we have in-person support groups. We do um, fund um, different um, community projects, um, nonprofits or senior centers uh, to do different various support groups. On Nantucket, we do have a caregiver support group through palliative care um, and hospice services there. Um, but yeah, there's been a, a definite growth and uh, that growth will continue probably for another 20 years. And I imagine we will see the growth continue right there on Nantucket. Um, so I think we're, we're here to stay for the long run. Um, and uh, we continually uh, look for more volunteers, more support um, in order to provide the good quality services that we do. Can you see how these, how you, how these programs may be changing? or what new programs might be helpful to folks? Just curious. I think that we're, we're definitely seeing um, use of uh, technology more, um, just reading recent articles and whatnot. Um, a lot more medical online technology to be used in people's homes so um, they can better have access to their, their primary physicians, um, you know, nurse practitioners, physician assistants. Um, so really, uh, one of the jobs that we have is, is helping um, older adults with technology, running uh, technology computer training programs. We do that here on the Cape. We'd love to do something like that on Nantucket, um, how to embrace technology um, for things like that. So you have better access to medical care. And I know that's can be a barrier in itself being on an island. Um, how do you access care? So anything we can do to, um, to help with that uh, technology wise, but also um, we look for um, just, you know, creative, smart approaches on how we can provide services. So if a group of seniors, let's say, live um, in a housing complex, such as uh, Landmark House there, um, we would try to contract with uh, one vendor to provide services. So it's, it's done efficiently 
and uh, that we're able to fill all the needs of the different people that live in that apartment complex. Um, so just different ways of strategizing on how we can work effectively and smarter. Um, there's definitely, um, you know, nationwide, a huge shortage on home health aides and home care workers. And this really, really impacts our agency. Uh, Nantucket's been doing pretty good so far. Um, amazingly, I, I find that amazing being an island, but I think that goes back to really um, uh, respecting and honoring um, home care workers and home health aides, paying them good wages. I need to say that that's really important and valuing it's the important work that they do, uh, providing personal care to yourself or your mom or your dad, um, that needs to be valued and uh, good pay with that. And uh, that's really important for us at our agency that we contract and work with people who are going to um, uh, give the utmost respect and um, um, dignity and um, uh, you know reward, financial reward in the, in the form of salary to the home health aides. That's really important to us. And, and so I've been, a, um, I've been on the board of Elder Services of Cape Cod and the islands for a while, and it, I'm generally flabbergasted to hear, well, not flabbergasted, but the, what services are provided and, and how well Nantucket actually does when it comes to covering our population. I mean, you know, I, I think in my last conversation with Sherry about this, um, we had no one waiting for health care, um, home care services here, which is unlike most of the other places, you know, on the Cape. So I think that the e e elder services in general is doing a great job. And I just have to thank Sherry for the relationships that she's built with people to enable us to be where we are when it comes to being able to care for the seniors in, in, in homes. But um, another program that I think people don't know about is the protective services program. You were talking, Marianne, about how, um, you know, it's not just you or your family, but it's the people in your neighborhood that you care about. Um, and people need to know that there's a place to call if they are concerned. Um, talk a little bit about the protective services program part. Yeah, so protective services, um here and we, we as well cover um, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard as well, um, is basically a program where you may identify um, as somebody being at risk, um, and if we will, an elder at risk who is maybe self-neglecting, not caring for themselves, or maybe has lost some capacity, um, maybe cognitively um, to take care of things. So you notice that a neighbor um, is, you know, not keeping up, not dressing, dressing well, maybe they're not eating as well. Um, those are all flags and signs of uh, possible self-neglect. Um, so that's where um, a referral can be made um, to say there, there's something, there's something that we're concerned about our neighbor here, we're concerned about, um, you know, our mother-in-law, father-in-law, wh whoever it is, um, to say, uh, you know, is this a reportable situation where somebody clearly isn't taking care of themselves? Um, maybe little by little, um, they have cognitively declined because of uh, some dementia that's increasing and they're not caring for themselves. That's one form of, um, if you will, that comes under the elder abuse statue of self-neglect. But we also um, look and investigate um, and screen in cases where we have people that might be financially exploited um, by someone in their life being taken advantage of, um, people who may be physically abused, um, emotionally abused or neglected by caregivers. Um, so those are all reportable uh, situations under the law. And it's, it doesn't have to be a mandated reporter. Mandated reporters are nurses, um, uh, doctors, social workers, firemen, police, um, but anyone can make a report and uh, the report can even be anonymous where you call the toll-free number um, and make an elder abuse report, which we'll have available um, on the screen. And you can um, let the person know the intake, what the situation is for this uh, senior and um, we will start an investigation, we'll screen it in, start an investigation to see how we can help and alleviate um, the abuse or neglect. And sometimes it's as simple as really um, connecting with family members that person has, 
putting in supports, putting in home care services that Sherry talked about, or the Meals on Wheels program. So sometimes it's just services can really alleviate um, what the neglect factors are. And now um, the person can be, the case can be closed because we now have a care manager assigned to the case. We have services in and we have other supports and other referrals um, in place for help for that individual. So our goal, again, goes back to keeping somebody independent, but also safe in the community. And by the way, it's so important that folks hear that because I think a lot of times the, the I wanna say the obstacle to people reporting, but you're hesitant to report because you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna end up in a nursing home, right? Or, oh my God, my neighbor's gonna end up in a nursing home as opposed to, well, you know, this person may be having some problems, but there may be some services that are available in the community that can deal with that so the person can stay home so that you're Frank or Mary and you can still stay home for longer, right? Because of programs you might not even have known about. Right. And we, we respond to cases. Uh, there's uh, three types of screening. There's an emergency case, there's a rapid response, and then there's a routine response. But an emergency, uh, we try to get to the elder and intervene as soon as possible within a couple of hours and with a, within um, a rapid within 24 hours. So we do have uh, protective service staff here uh, on the Cape that are assigned to Nantucket and um, will intervene and come over and, and take action um, as soon as possible and really just try to alleviate any um, uh, abuse or stress or neglect that's going on with services, with help. And um, then uh, go from there to try to make a long-term plan to, again, keep people independent. It's not about, you know, having a net and um, scooping somebody up and saying you have to go to a, a nursing facility. No, right. the, the goal is independence in the home. That's a wonderful thing to know. Besides volunteering, what are the programs you think that, that are underutilized on Nantucket or, or everywhere? I can't speak to everywhere. Um, I know that we offer a money management program, which is volunteer based and they come into the home and help the elder manage their checkbook, pay their bills, because often that is one of the things you might see in um, a declining senior that they, they can't remember to pay the bill, they think they paid the bill, they can't write the check, those sorts of things. And right now we have no volunteers in Nantucket for that program. So um, it's rather difficult to make a referral to the program. Right. There are also guidelines and financial criteria to be met there as well. This is a good place to solicit because a lot of seniors watch the show and you've got a lot of really smart retired seniors. So what, what, are the, what would be the criteria that you would want for a volunteer who was saying that they'd be willing to do that kind of work? By the way, you'd never want me to do that kind of work. <laughs> I have yet to balance my checkbook ever. It, it's just someone who's willing. And there's a training you know, for the volunteers. So they would be trained on how to manage certain things about working with an elder it with, you know, finding working with money in an elder can be difficult. You have to gain the trust of the elder you're working with. So, you know, having a volunteer who would be assigned to this one senior, they might meet every week. They might meet, you know, every other week, once a month, depends on the senior's actual needs to get organized and set up. So um, I would, I would say that it, I'm not looking for anything other than somebody who's got the heart and soul to do this. So could I ask if folks wanted to sign up for this or any program or to talk to you, who, where, who do they, where do they call? 508-228-4647. The other number I was just gonna say is our, our, um, our toll free number you can dial um, for information referral and we can connect you directly to the Nantucket office. But for um, some general questions that you may have um, about anything, about resources, referrals, anything in the elder care aging network, um, even if it's a question about social security, we'll give you the right number to call. So that's 1-800-244-4630. Uh, Allison, thanks for doing this yet, yet again, for getting great guests. Okay. Sherry, it's wonderful to see you again. You too. Mary Ann, it's wonderful to meet you. Congratulations. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you, Arthur. Awesome. You, you in either either coming up, come out to Nan, to Nantucket or the other island. You know, <laughs> we, 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 we may see you there. We won't say that we won't even say the name, but but it was it was really wonderful. And folks, the, the once again, the point of this is these are I want where I from where I started, these are your tax dollars at work. 
contact these people. The whole purpose of their agency is to help you stay on Nantucket for the rest of your life. That's your home. And, your home. and to provide a vehicle through which if you, can, if you have time to volunteer, you can help other people do the same thing. So Allison, thank you so much. Yeah, thank um, you ladies for joining us. And, and if there's anything that you would like to share, as far as you know, any needs going forward or new programming, please, please, you know, let us know, and we'd love to have you on again. Yes, please, thank you, thank Definitely. you both, all thank right. you all, and folks, thank right. you for watching, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much. <laughs>